Next, I want to introduce the Executive Director of Equality North Carolina. He will be giving us an update on the state of equality in North Carolina, so please help me in welcoming Ian Palmquist. Started, I want to thank uh, Rod as our chair, um, as well as Dan Gurley, the chair of the Equality NC board, uh, and all of the members of the board of directors uh, who really put in a ton of work year round to help make not just this conference in Gala possible, but all of the work of Equality North Carolina. Um, and I also want to thank our really incredible staff uh, Rebecca Mann, our director of community organizing and outreach who's responsible for putting together this program today. Uh, Kate Flaminio, our Director of Development, uh, who's putting together the gala for y'all this evening, and uh, Sean Long, our incredible administrative coordinator, who's keeping everything running smoothly for us. And, and I also want to join Rod in thanking UNCG, and particularly uh, Women's and Gender Studies, uh, for helping make this space available to us. It's a wonderful space. We're so glad to be back here again this year. And, and really thank you so much. Um, what I wanted to talk about this morning uh, was talk a little bit, um, I know everybody's focused on the election, but I do wanna uh, go over some of the successes we had earlier this year. Talk a little bit about what the new policy landscape looks like after the election. Um, what that means for the issues that all of us care about. Uh, and then talk a little bit about the way forward as, as we see it right now. Um, so first, starting off with our successes, because I think it's so important that we do remember uh, the really incredible things that we've all achieved together. Um, and first and foremost, we're still very proud that for seven years, North Carolina has held back an anti-gay, uh, anti-marriage constitutional amendment. Um, we are the only state in the South that continues to not have this kind of discrimination in our Constitution and has uh, ensured that we don't have a marriage discrimination amendment that not only would prohibit marriage, but also civil union, domestic partnership, and any other form of relationship recognition. That is a huge success, and it's a testament to uh, Speaker Joe Hackney, who we're recognizing tonight, as well as President Pro Tem Mark Basnight in the Senate, uh, for their work, along with their colleagues, to help us make sure that that has not come up. And as you can imagine, we're going to be coming back to this topic in a little bit. Um, one of the other really amazing successes this year, it was a short legislative session. Most of our policy issues weren't eligible to come up, uh, but what was coming up was the state budget. And we faced an $800 million shortfall in the state budget. And in a year where legislators were looking anywhere high and low to find anything they can cut, any programs that they can find savings on. Uh, we were successful at getting the legislature to actually increase funding for the AIDS Drug Assistance Program because the program was in crisis. We had over 700 people on a waiting list who needed access to life-saving medication that they could not afford, um, who were not getting those services. And thanks to Equality North Carolina and the North Carolina AIDS Action Network, we were able to get an additional 14.1 million that's more than double the state's previous contribution to the day. I want to take a minute to recognize our really incredible coalition partners in the North Carolina AIDS Action Network. Uh, I co-chair their steering committee along with Carolyn McAllister, who is here somewhere. Yes. Uh, in the back, and uh, our brand new coordinator uh, for the North Carolina AIDS Action Network, Lisa Hazurgeon. Um, so if you're interested in HIV policy issues, uh, definitely get to know these wonderful folks. <coughs> we also saw some of our past victories um, really bear fruit in the last year. Uh, in 2008, we were successful at getting a uh, hospital visitation protection put into the Patient's Bill of Rights for every hospital in the state. And this year, we were so excited and, and surprised when President Obama wrote a presidential memo directing Health and Human Services to ensure that every hospital in this country 
that receives Medicare or Medicaid funding, which is basically every hospital in the country, um, that they have to adopt hospital visit visitation protections as well. And he actually directly quoted the policy that Equality North Carolina wrote and got put into policy here in North Carolina. So the work that we've done together is We also saw our victories in 2009 in the legislature um, go into effect. Um, when students went back to school this year for the first time uh, in many years now, uh, kids in grades seven through nine have access to comprehensive, medically accurate sex education instead of a just say no approach. And that is critically important for all students, but particularly for LGBT young students who need to know how to protect themselves uh, when they become sexually active. And the School Violence Prevention Act. We are now in the first school year where every public school student in the state is protected by a comprehensive anti-bullying policy that protects all students, but specifically spells out that we have to protect kids who are being harassed and bullied based on their actual or perceived sexual orientation or gender identity. We know that it's making a difference, and we know that uh, North Carolina is now being cited as a model as we uh, see this issue rise to the forefront in our national debate. I think in the last few months, uh, many of us have seen story after story of the tragic bullying-related suicides that are happening all over the country and the incredible responses that are happening with the It Gets Better project uh, and the Make It Better project. Um, we're so proud that North Carolina was a little bit ahead of the curve in getting this kind of comprehensive policy in place that's now being cited as a model as other states look for ways to address these issues. So those are just some of the successes we've had together, and I'd ask you all to, to give yourselves a hand and give Equality North Carolina a hand for the amazing work that we've been able to do. So before I get into exactly where we're going on our issues, I wanted to give everybody a little bit of a sense of what the new landscape looks like. Last week's election really changed the face of politics in North Carolina and our strategies uh, for winning full equality here in North Carolina. Um, and so I wanted to start with just a little brief civics refresher. It's been a long time since ninth grade for some of us. So, uh, you know, back to schoolhouse rocks here. Uh, the process for passing just a regular policy bill in North Carolina is, is pretty simple. Uh, it's got to get through a committee in both chambers. It's got to pass both the House and the Senate with just a simple majority. Um, the governor does have the ability to veto these kinds of bills, and that is going to be important for us potentially this year. Um, and it takes three-fifths of the House and three-fifths of the Senate to override a veto from the governor. The process for constitutional amendment is a little bit different. Um, it has to get through committees just like a regular bill, but it actually takes three-fifths of the House and three-fifths of the Senate uh, to go. And the governor doesn't actually have any role in the constitutional amendment process, so there is no veto on a constitutional amendment. Um, once it's come out of the legislature, once three-fifths of both chambers have passed a, a constitutional amendment, it would then go on the November ballot, uh, and that's just a simple majority up or down vote on the amendment. So what does the, the layout look like now? Um, starting with the executive branch, uh, we have Governor Bev Perdue uh, and Lieutenant Governor Walter Dalton. Um, both are pro-equality uh, folks. They're Democrats um, who we've been working with for a number of years now. Um, Governor Perdue has committed to support many of our issues, and we fully expect and will be calling on her uh, to veto any anti-LGBT legislation that comes out of the General Assembly this year. Um, Walter Dalton's role would come in particularly in the Senate. If the Senate has a tie, um, the Lieutenant Governor gets to cast a tie-breaking vote there. Um, and he's also a great ally and was a, a champion of the School Violence Prevention Act when he was in the State Senate. <clears throat> so the State House, if you look at the top there on the graph, that's uh, where things stand right now. Uh, and then the lower one is where things stand uh, going into 2011. In terms